The following program is rated BBMALSA. It contains strong language, sexual situations, awesomeness, and nudity. It is intended only for mature audiences. Listener indiscretions are advised. Welcome to our Bliss Bringers podcast. The materials we cover encourage adults of all ages, nationalities, and sexualities to open up and embrace their wildest desires and blissful pleasures. You won't find medical advice here, just our personal experiences following the journey of sexual evolution and education in sizzling fun topics that were definitely not taught to us in school, but have wickedly blossomed into reality. We discuss adventures in ethical non-monogamy, kinks and fetishes, exotic places to visit, sexy events, workshops, and tips allow us to seduce you into embarking on new adventures where each day you ask yourself what's your pleasure so we is back yay (laughs) that's all my energy yay back in bed is this a bed cast yes this is technically a bed cast you wanted a bed cast so you can oh that's because i didn't want to get out of bed it feels so good these blankets are holding me down Uh uh-huh they won't let me go so (sighs) Mr. Cindy, what all did you remember of last night? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> it's all hazy. <laughs> jello shots. I remember jello shots. They were yummy. Mm-hmm. And wine. I only had one glass because you only brought a half a bottle. Who the hell brings a half a bottle of wine to a swinger party? Holy shit. Well, it looks like you had enough alcohol. Well, that's because I had to lean on our friends and be one of those mongrels that drink someone else's alcohol except last night it was no biggie because uh candy's adventures has plenty of alcohol available for everyone i just felt it was kind of weird because we normally bring enough for ourselves and everyone else only you did the diet version on me last night and brought only a half a bottle of wine so i ended up switching to vodka Ugh, i mixed hard alcohol and wines that was just one of the things she did. That was all I did. And what else happened? I don't know. You tell me. Well, start from the beginning. Yes. What was the theme of the party? The theme of the party was Roaring Twenties? Something. Yes, exactly. You know, we had this uh, philosophical conversation last night. Remember I was asking you what was going on in Belgium and Europe in the 20s? And you're like, uh... uh recovering from the war? World War One. Yeah, exact, exactly. Oh, my God. And yet we were over here in the United States whining and crying because of prohibition. Some of us lack the cultural reference to to get that, I guess. Well, okay. So we went roaring 20s. And I have to admit, we looked adorable. You always look adorable. You always look handsome. All the girls loved you. So we made it to the party in our cute outfits. Mm -hmm. Got some vanilla shots done. Got our vanilla shots done. That way our... Our friends and family out there go, oh my gosh, look at John and Cindy going to those parties, those lucky devils. Mm -hmm. It's a birthday party. It's the birthday party. If any of you guys ever get stuck, just tell Vanilla's, oh, we've got an anniversary we have to go to. Oh, we have to go to a birthday party. Lots of birthday parties. So fast forwarding to the good parts, you did a couple jello shots. I love jello shots. You know, I didn't do my famous jello shots where I take a victim and then put it on their body and slurp it off them. Why not? I uh, just wasn't feeling the vibe. Okay. So we started talking to some of the people that we knew before. One of them, let's call her Miss Petite. She's a single girl. I brought up that she still, whether she still wanted those spankings or not, or whether she wanted to try the electricity. She says, oh yeah, I want to try it. I want to do it. So I'll... Took home the gear bag and went to one of the, the bedrooms. She was undressed very quickly. She was ready for it. So I started unpacking. Uh, it was a little bit of awkward because you got to find a good place that has an outlet within reach. But I was doing that. Then we had our friend, Mr. River Friend. And he swooped in and said, oh, yeah, uh, do you mind if uh, I play here a little bit while you're busy there? And I'm like, uh... And that's such a caca, caca, predator. Yes. Mm, so, <laughs> so while I was warming up the butter. Yeah, z- and zapping and, and getting her all excited. He, he ended was also, up grilling in the butter. <laughs> <laughs> well, first he was he was making out with her and we just we just sort of like He was making out while you were zapping? Yes. Did he get zaps too? She should have been able to zap. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's So that that was pretty interesting. 
Caca, caca. <laughs> yeah, and then then things got blurry. What? Because we had somebody else walk into that room. Shall we call her Miss M? Okay. She was like, yeah, I want to try this. I want to try it as well. I'm like, okay. But you got to be naked for it. So she's like, okay, yeah, 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 I'll be back. So she walks out. John, I think that's just your way. You pull out the violent wand every single time, and that's your way of ice breaking and getting women naked. No. It is. Would I do that? Yes. The funny thing is, is Riverman, he closes the deals. Well, I was... Jesus. (laughs) He he was closing deals before I even had the paperwork out. You're slow, man. You gotta you gotta take some lessons from a predator. <laughs> he's not really a predator. He's just he's a closer. He's a salesman by nature. <laughs> uh huh. Caca, caca. <laughs> Anyhow, so Mrs. M comes in naked, and uh, Mr. River starts making out with her as well. What? Yes. He took him. I'm telling you, he's a closer. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? What? What was going on here? Are we, uh, what are we Cock-wise. doing here? Left. Yeah, right, no, no, but left, he, he was right. like he was like a little dog peeing on everything, right? I said, mine, mine, mine. Yes. I'm like, wait him. a second here, but then Oh man, I missed it. I can't remember how it happened, but then he and Miss Petite started fucking. I was zapping Miss M all over her body. She's, where was her husband? I don't know where he was at that point in time. He was missing in action. Well, he was there when I walked in. When I Yeah, but hang on. So she was getting all excited about that. Basically, then needed to get fucked. So and and how do you know she needed to get fucked, or did you decide? Oh, you know what, Riverman's fucking, so I need to fuck. No, she was. She made it pretty clear. I don't know if she said it, but she made it pretty clear that that she wanted it. Uh, well, what does that mean? Well, when she what's the signal? When she lays on her back, opens her legs, and and. Pushes me close. That sort of... Pushes uh, or pulls? P- pulls. Oh. Now, were you undressed at this point? Or? Uh, yes, for some reason. I don't know who who how I got undressed. So anyhow, so that happened. So I played with her for a while. She was a big squirter. And then... Did you guys have a towel on the bed? Yes. Oh, good. And yeah, that's the one thing that ah, people make sure to put a towel down. <laughs> So yeah, that, that that was that was pretty interesting slash unexpected because I was totally not expecting to play with her. I didn't even know her name at that point. In time. Now was she a squirter when you were f- touching her with your fingers? No. Or, oh, she squirts when you fuck. Yes, she squirts lots. You have a big Belgian cock, so that that would make. A lot of women squirt. Is she the and one that she said that she pushes people out when she squirts? Her muscles yes, contract? Yes, she has, she has strong muscles. She has strong kegel muscles. Yeah. And so, so so I played with her a little bit. What's it feel like when you have a woman's muscles wrap around it's you? It's weird. What do you yeah. mean it's weird? It, I, I, there's no way to Does describe it. Does it freak it. you out? No. But I can't come up with a good way to describe it, let's just say. It's like, how shall I put it? A power Ima- imagine, no, imagine you have a, the water hose going and you try to s- block it with your finger. Oh, like a kid, like when you use your thumb and you stuff. No, when you try you... to stick it in. Yeah. Right? Imagine sticking your finger in the running water hose. <laughs> wow, there's that much fluid? <laughs> yeah, I don't That's know. That's awesome. It's, it's weird. That's a true squirter. There's a lot of women that mm. are gushers, like, like the warm fluid comes out of us. Mm-hmm. And then there's those power washers that... I I wish they are. Do you remember when we were on the cruise in Italy? Yes. And that was the, that that was an extreme power washer. An oh, and Miss Pilates w- has a power washer. <laughs> no, she's more of a flood than a power washer. She was like a BP gush. <laughs> I love it. All right, carry on. I love your story. So played for a little bit, then took a break, and then her husband came in. I was there when you were getting undressed. And he was already there. He was mm. off in the corner. Oh, I didn't see him there. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a dork. I was focused. It's yeah, important. he was handing her something, and I think it may have been a lube. He was like the gear guy. He mm-hmm. was he was off to the the off in the corner. I was standing by the door watching. So I actually saw you getting out of your underwear in your socks. Maybe not your socks. You may have fucked her with your socks. No, I did not. Okay, I did. Get, I saw you getting out of your underwear. A gentleman would never. Please, I've seen you many a time. I'm like, Mm-mm, you take them socks off. Okay. Anywho, 
So then her husband came in and he started eating her out. Oh, I don't like that term. He started going down on her. I like that term better. <laughs> Is that a prude of me? Yes. Yeah, it just seems like so trashy. And he was eating around. Yum, 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 yum. Yeah, so he he did a good job on her. Well, they were doing that, and then Mrs. Petit and, and River Guy were still going at it. Oh, yeah, I forgot they were laying next to you in the same bed. <laughs> so I positioned myself so that she could suck my cock. Who? Uh, Mrs. M. Oh. While her husband was going down on her. Oh. And, like, she was, like, totally into that. She was pulling on me to get me deeper in her mouth and stuff like that. So she was she was totally digging that. <laughs> uh, th but the way that I was, she, she was, like, laying on the bed normal, like you'd normally lay in a bed. So yes. I had to go in at an angle. Oh. With, with all that Were movement. Were you standing? I got, I got my leg between the head oh, of the no. bed and the, what do you call it? Did it slip through the mattress? Yes. Your leg got stuck behind the headboard. Yes. Oh. Between the between the headboard and the mattress. Why does this these things happen to you? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> so that was a little bit awkward, but she didn't know that she was like, oh, 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 pushing me and 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 and. Wait, you didn't stop? No. <laughs> the show must go on. You're remember, a champ, high five. Yeah. Oh my god! So that whole time she's sucking on your cock, your leg is behind the the headboard, stuck behind the mattress on the headboard. Yes. You're so awesome. So I managed to pull that out there. <laughs> Pulled something out. <laughs> yes. And then, <laughs> let's see what happened then. I think I, I I fucked her some more doggy style for a little bit. And she, she, yeah, she had multiple orgasms. She was like splashing all over the place. And then I needed a break. <laughs> That's why you're worn out today. Because you didn't drink. You have yeah, one that glass was, of that, wine that's and right. That was so, it. and I also, oh, I also did flogging of Mrs. Petit and Mrs. M mm -hmm. while okay. they were laying there on the bed. You also so, had other people. Well, no, that this was during the the play session there. Oh. So Mrs. Petit, while fucking, she was getting. I was flogging her and and zapping her. So, how does electricity and squirters work? Isn't that a little dangerous? You know no. how they tell you, no, they always say, don't get electricity near water. I was just zapping her body. It's not. But splashing water. I, I mean, I'm just saying. That's okay. And then. Okay. If there's any BDSM experts out there, I would like you to write into our show <laughs> and give me like your buckets, feedback. It's not like buckets, right? It's it, the same thing with sweat. It doesn't or like, matter. They tell you don't get near water and she was a squirter all right i say no whatever so you get then, electrified so, so you were watching all that i didn't see that part i didn't see the electricity play i just saw the fucking fest the and did you see fest. the flogging no huh okay uh -uh. i feel weird i know this sounds this sounds weird i feel creepy watching you it's like being one of those creepazoids that are lurking around i just feel weird watching my husband fuck other people. In fact, I turned to one of our friends, Mrs. C, blonde Miss C, and I said, have you ever wondered or said out loud, I wonder who my husband's fucking? Because I couldn't tell who you were fucking. And my head was trying to say that it was Mrs. Petite, but I knew it wasn't because I could see her body on the other side with River friend. And so I'm sitting here going, who the hell is that person? And Mrs. C goes all the time. I, in fact, most of the time, I don't even know the people until a party or two later when they come up and they say, oh, I had a wonderful time. And I said, yeah, that's funny because I don't know who he's fucking. So anyhow, I just feel weird and he's staring at you. And I know I should enjoy it, but I'm a creep. No, you're not. You're, you're the wife. That well, means by default you have permission to be there oh thank you well here let me give you the perspective of when i do see sort of the husband standing off in the corner and it happens on a lot of parties when you're with uh your partners is the men will stand off to the side and they kind of like become lube boys <laughs> for their wife or their female partner i i feel i don't know i feel we i feel sad for them for some reason and i shouldn't because they're enjoying watching their wife yeah. but i feel bad for them 
Oh, by the by the way, the husband of of Mrs. M. Yeah, he was saying like, oh yeah, and that was so hot, and I loved seeing that, and I loved going down on her while she was sucking on you because that was the first time I've ever seen her do that. And, oh, that's uh, awesome. And I was, yeah. No, I love it when I see the husband as part of the play, and they mm-hmm. they weave themselves into it and then they step back and allow the wife to have their own playtime session. I do enjoy that. Yeah, I think it's a big difference between a husband being there or a, a single creeper guy just looking at stuff. Oh, I that- agree. But I know for me, I wouldn't have joined in. Not my style. I have a thing about play parties. I'm kind of a fruitcake that way. Mm-hmm. You're my pancake. I am. I'm glad you enjoy me. <laughs> but I enjoy the parties. So next, I went outside to get some air. And some water, and there was like a little fire going on, and everybody. It's really nice how Candy's Adventure sets up their yeah. house party because they always do a little bonfire outdoors, a little fire pit. That's where people can sit around and socialize and chat. And those that aren't playing, they can just you know hang out there. It's a great place to get fresh air. Yes. So while we were sitting there, and you came up after your play session, yes. Uh, and I didn't realize that Mrs. M was to my left. And mm-hmm. she was chatting, and that's when I realized, oh, because she was fully dressed, and her husband was sitting next to her. You didn't recognize her with her clothes on. I didn't recognize her. Well, I recognized her with her clothes on. I didn't recognize her when her clothes were off, and she was under you. Okay. It wasn't until afterwards. We somehow started talking about electricity. One mm-hmm. of the ladies and her husband across from the fire said, oh, I love electricity. And she called it the violent wand, which <laughs> like, that's no. what I nickname it. Uh, and she's like, do you have one? And I said, yes, my husband has one. And she goes, oh, our roommate used to give me electricity sessions and he's moved out and it's been three months. I would love it. And then Mrs. M's husband said, oh, he was really curious and he wanted to try it. And I'm like, oh, did your wife, when she was playing with the electricity, did she lick your balls? Did she zap you? His eyes lit up and he wanted to play. So that's where we we transitioned of let's go in the house and go find a socket and go play with electricity again. Yes. Only, Mrs. J, I think, was was the cheerleader on that. Like, oh, yeah, let's yeah. go. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. first I was in the, in the big meeting room and like, oh, no, we can't play in here. OK, let's go to the one bedroom and see there uh, where I had the gear, where we had the previous play. That was fully packed, so I'm moving the gear towards the other bedroom, and there wasn't really any working sockets there. I went to the third bedroom, the master bedroom, and we're ready to set up there. And then uh, they were like, oh, no, we're having an orgy in there. Can't you do this in the living room? Okay. Yeah, make sure that if you're at a party that if you go into the rooms and you want to set up a a BDSM scene, make sure that you ask the other participants that are in that bedroom if they mind, because... There, especially when it comes to electricity, there are a lot of people that hate the sound of the snack crackle pop. And it's a love or hate. People either love the sound and they're attracted to it like little moths or they hate it so much they go into an anger mode and they're going to scratch your eyeballs out. So, yeah, always make sure that you ask because I, I, people start barking. I'm like, ha, I'm out of here. <laughs> I left. <laughs> yeah. So I did find... A spot in the TV room. It was the social room. The social room where they had a U-shaped sofa with mm-hmm. everybody. And then what? what is that thing called? It's not a table. It's like an ottoman or something like that. Yeah, it is. What that thing was. Yeah. And then I put Miss J on there. And on her back. On her back. Started pulling things out. His toys, not his deck. Would I do that? Yes. Okay, I would. I might do that. <laughs> <laughs> Started pulling out the gear for the violent wand and his floggers and his gloves. She, she liked it. She absolutely liked it. Were you watching there? Yeah. I was standing off to the corner with Chewy. No. Oh. And you had a huge audience because everyone was sitting in the sofa area and they were all watching all the toys that you're pulling out. And there were several spectators that were like, wow, he's a professional. I'm like, oh. It's just my husband. <laughs> <laughs> and Chewie was like, wow, John plays that part well. He's like the professional European BDSM guy. Look how comfortable he is. And I go, yeah, he's really grown up. <laughs> yeah. He's very comfortable with his well, toys. I, I, I do. 
I don't I have zero problems in going in front of an audience. Uh, that's one of the things that that you learn, I guess. We did the fun party game of having everybody zap her. That went on for what a while. What does that mean? I put contact on her, so I put current on her, and then people around her, they get to use one finger to touch her, just one finger, and if you're the subject there, you get electricity coming from all different directions, different points of your body, and it's very erotic, and it's very like mind-boggling if you're getting that. Was anyone licking her nipples? Oh, of course. There has to be nipple licking. that part. Electricity. It works very well with tongues and on, especially on wet parts. So having multiple people lick nipples and... It's a great uh, icebreaker game. Yes. Uh, nipple licking is always very good. And if you ever need someone to break the ice in your party, invite John. Yep. <laughs> we, we will zap him and do whatever. Have toys, we'll travel. That was fun. Then when she was done with that... We did another round with Mrs. M because she's really insatiable when it comes to that stuff. I played with her. I did some flogging on her. And then another girl came up. She wanted to try it. And then I've actually recruited Miss M as a uh, assistant. So she was like using the mini, mini Mylar flogger on her while I was using the gloves on her. She was liking it. The audience was liking it, and then I had, while I was using electricity and spikes on her, I had Miss M use the toy from Boris and Doris on her. And what's the toy look like? I can't remember. A long metal, a bent metal thing with, with knobs on it. Mm-hmm. And you can see it on the website. And what's it designed to do? It's a G-Spot stimulator. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess you can turn around and, and, and put it in other places as well. But in Prostate this case, stimulator. In this case, we uh, she used it at, as a G-spot stimulator. Oh, so and you insert it? Mrs. M inserted it into lady number three. Oh, good. So she was having so much fun, we all decided that she would have needed the screaming orgasm. Oh, my God. Where did I, how did I miss this? I was outside. So I used the electricity with the, with the spiky gloves on her. We used the vibrator on her. We used the um, Boris and Doris story. The name escapes me now. And I made her orgasm on command, which was also sort of fun. Did oh, did not... you do the countdown? I did the countdown. Like you did with Geisha. Yep. I uh, counted down from 10 and made her come. And that I worked. love that stuff. And That's so awesome to see someone going, oh, my God. Yeah, it, I, was, I was amazed that it worked from the very first time. So I was a little bit lucky on that. But everybody liked it. That was the finale on that. Uh, we had lots of people asking questions. That's good, honey. Yep. That's great. That's a great way to introduce central BDSM mm-hmm. to swingers, which, yes. you know, most people think of BDSM as violent and it's the dark side. But everybody fantasizes. Most women and men fantasize about some form of a BDSM, whether it be spanking or bondage or whatever, mm-hmm. most people, vanillas even, including, think of it, fantasize about it. And there are quite a few men that are not comfortable with the spanking because they've been brought up, you don't hit a woman. And it, there's a huge difference. So I've had quite a few men push their wives to you <laughs> and enjoy it because they know that's what their wife wants. Yep. So, oh, that's good. I'm glad you had an awesome, sexy time last night. Yes. And... Did some more explanations um, to people on like like how to use bondage tapes. Talked to, there was a lot of questions afterwards. It was fun. We also met uh, some more listeners, which was pretty interesting. Yeah, they listened to some of our friends on another podcast. Well, they, those were the people who who listened to Life on the Swing Set, and they were they were like, "Oh, are you the one that that uh, spanked Cooper?" And uh, yep. Yeah, but I'm the first one that flogged them. No, but we also had some some Blizzbringer listeners. uh, Yes, we did. I love it when we run into our fans. Yes. And our listeners and and friends. And they're just great people. Yep. Here's the thing that I I get really nervous about at the parties. And you and I talk about this all the time because our objectives to the parties, these these types of parties are completely different. I... I use them as my social circle. I get to be free and tease and flirt and just 
hang out with people. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking for sex partners. I'm very happy and satisfied with our sex life, yours and my sex life. And uh, having the ability to have multiple partners is great, but it's just not, you know, not my thing. Um, so for me, I I get all tongue tied in talking with people, and when they're hitting on me, and they're they're a lot of times it doesn't have to do with just being li listeners, but you know when someone sends you those signals that they're really interested in taking that conversation in the bedroom, that's the part that makes me anxious. <laughs> and I, I notice that I ditch out of conversations quickly. I jump, I kind of like, hmm. I'm like a little bee that jumps from flower to flower to flower. I don't want to stick around too long because it's, uh, you know, in swingers parties, that's just the general progression of where the conversations go. If you click with someone's conversation, you just ask them, hey, you want to take this in the bedroom? I don't want that to happen. And there were three occasions last night that I was enjoying the conversation and all of a sudden I got the change of energy and I'm thinking, I got to get out of here because that next question is going to come up. And so I ditched, I ditched well, out. Well, you can always say no, thank you. I don't like rejecting. It, it's uncomfortable. And yes, I do. I think I do reject, but I just don't like that feeling. I guess I don't want to, it's kind of like if someone asks, a boy asks a girl to dance at school i never turned anyone down i always felt bad because i know what it felt like when it i got turned down in school so i don't know i don't uh i don't like the feeling but i do i do tell them thank you but no thank you oh i know that's why I, I don't know you know with these labels and stuff with the swinger and things and i guess the the reason i'm sharing this is because i want other people to understand that it's a normal feeling to feel anxious uh, and uncomfortable and, but it, it's okay to push that awkwardness, get out of that comfort zone. And so I'm still working on it. I'm still working on it. Uh, one gentleman, I'll give you an example last night. One gentleman last night, it was his birthday the night before. And normally if I'm there at a party with cats fun, I, I will try to instigate a birthday blow job, but she wasn't there. She said, my, my, partner in crime wasn't there last night. And so when this gentleman and I were chatting and he said it was his birthday, I got this feeling of, oh, I should be giving him a birthday blow job because I love doing that kind of stuff. And I go, oh, great. <laughs> and then he started asking me about, you know, how often do I go to these parties and uh, would I like to, you know, and, and he kind of like motioned to the room. He didn't use the word. And I said, oh, no, I don't play at parties. <laughs> God, I feel like I'm a 16 year old nerd. Oh. No, but can I spank you instead? Can I flog you? <laughs> can I tease you? Can I put electricity to you? That's what I want to do. Oh. Well, you got to find what your what works for you, baby. Hey, being the social butterfly works for me. Uh -huh. I love hanging out at swingers parties. I love it. I love to watch you having your good old time. You've got that crossover between kink and swing, and it's smooth and it works for you, and I love it. Oh, yeah. we do our best. Yeah. And last night was really good because we ended on. Yeah. Let's talk about what what went on after the party. Well, what is our rule? What's my rule? What do I always ask? Oh, we, that we should always play together last. And why do I ask that? Because it's sort of like reclamation sex. It is because I see you, you know, bonding with other women. You're actually very different. Your personality is different with other women. And your approach is very confident. Not that you're not confident with me. I just feel that it may be more timid with me. And so seeing you in a different set of eyes, different costume and stuff, it's really a turn on. And you're right. At the end of the evening, I want, I want a piece of that action. I want that sexy, oh. confident man that I saw at the party. But first, we headed out there. Remember that? And remember, once we got in the car, the first thing you said? I'm hungry. Yes. <laughs> I was. I was hungry. We didn't eat dinner. Well, there was plenty of food there. Honey, but anyhow. That's not food. She's that's like, appetizers. oh, I want Denny's. I'm like, okay. I'll it's 2 a.m. Can I just say, <laughs> I don't know what it is. About 2 a.m. after parties, Denny's pops in my head. Yeah, Denny's is like the food of shame or something. like that. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> and I looked you, on the map, and, and the only Denny's. <laughs> Denny's in the neighborhood was closed. So what's our fallback? So the fallback was Taco Hell. <laughs> 
you don't eat this stuff any other time. It's you only all- <laughs> eat that shit when you're drunk or hungover or <laughs> it's 2 a.m. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, man. So we're we're in the drive through stop the car. Like, okay, let's figure this one out. What are we going to get? It took for you forever to decide on what you want with your tacos and shit. <laughs> and it, this was for like 2 a.m. It was filled with cars at drive through Well, there you go. We're not the only ones. Yes, we're not the only um, <laughs> people on the road at that point in time. <laughs> so we're standing in line there. We're placing our order. I'd stop the car. We're in the drive through place we're, the we're, order. We're, we're, in, we're in the mini with, with the windows open and stuff like that. The guy says, oh, can I help you? And I, Yes, I, so we're, we're, we're doing the order thing. We I need another do. minute. <laughs> yeah, so we place the order to the guy. And then, okay, well, this line is not moving at all. So we're chatting there. We're debriefing about the evening. Yes, yeah, so she's like, oh, yeah. And it was so interesting. Um we talked about what? all the scenes that we just described. Yes. Yeah, I just watched my guy fuck, but I didn't know who it was. And there was some kind of a story. Yes. I was like, you Tell were me talking the story. about, oh, yeah, River Boy, he sort of cock blocked you, and you were cracking up. Okay, do you want to know exactly what happened? Do you want to hear the story? You just kept on laughing. Oh, that's right. Okay, so I'm laughing because it's because Riverboy cock blocked you, and we were talking. Yes, and you kept on laughing. You didn't even you didn't even listen what I was trying to say. So I realized, like, do you want to hear the story, or did you just want to keep on laughing over there? (laughs) And and then. All of a sudden, we hear <laughs> from from the machine, oh, oh I want to hear the story. So the guy at Taco Bell had been listening to us the whole time with his headset. <laughs> Apparently, the thing is always on, so don't debrief your swinger stories in front of the <laughs> takeout thing at Taco Bell. Because the guy may hear you. Uh, it was funny because I was saying the same thing at the, at the time that the, the window guy says, well, I want to hear this story. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So that was a little bit weird. So <laughs> it was so funny. So if you're the Taco Bell guy, just go to blissbringers.com and uh, you'll hear. I tried to explain him that but when, when we were getting our tacos. But Oh my God, you handed him a business card at the window. Did you see the look on his face? He thought it was going to be a quick story. Like, no, no, no. no. If you want to hear the full story, go to the website. That was interesting. <laughs> Lesson learned, be careful where you do your debrief and not in front of the takeout window. <laughs> so we had our food-like product. Yeah, we munched it very quickly and then got on the road. And then got on the road, so I was driving on the highway, and then somebody got horny. I was horny. Yes, she was horny. So I started... To play with my clit. Playing with her clit. <laughs> You know what? Oh, you should take the exit here. Let's go over here to where the winery road is. I didn't know that it was the winery road there, but took the exit off. I tried to find a spot. There was this little shopping mall thing. Yeah. Really a nice spot there. No, he was going to park behind the shopping center, you know, where the loading docks are and and fuck me there under the lights. I'm like, oh, hell no. There's cameras out here. Are you kidding me? We're not going to fuck here. He's like, okay. So we zipped across the street. Yes. To a very dark parking lot. There was no lights out there. It was kind of... There was some lights out there. Okay. It was very dimly lit. It was the church parking lot, I think. (laughs) It was the church parking lot. (laughs) So... That's a first for me, by the way. (laughs) I've never fucked in a church parking lot. So so you fucked me for a bit in the Mini, which which was actually pretty impressive. That was a first, too. I'm telling you. Luckily that that you're doing the Pio and the stretching, because otherwise... Pio and yoga, man, my hips have opened up, and I am tall. I'm almost 5'10", so I've got some long legs, and we were in a Mini Cooper. I straddled that man, and I rode that cock. So, yeah, that worked. And then... We might have to do another one. My kitty just went, meow. Meow. I heard cock. Meow. Yeah. And we did that for a while until you it wasn't really uncomfortable. And I said, so, no, we're go- taking it outside. So, taking it outside in the middle of the parking lot. Out Bent and me over. You. Bent her over and fucked her. Oh, man, that was good. That was yummy. Yes. That was really yummy. That was... That was hot. That was hot. I actually came pretty quickly there. Well, honey, that's because the other girls were like fluffers. They yes. fucked you, teased you. you. Yeah, hell yeah. 
I don't mind having cheerleaders and getting you all ready. And then, ta-da, I get the grand finale. That's what I want. It was Mm -hmm. perfect. Stars aligned. Oh, the angels sang. Yep, yep. That was perfect. It was so good. And then on the way home, I needed to finish off. While we were driving, we used her... Nina. The Nina vibrator. Oh, man. That orgasm was so good. Thought I was going to kick the windshield out. While I was groping... Oh, while driving. Yeah, you were groping... Twisting my nipples. Yes. This was done by a professional driver on a closed course. Do not attempt this at home. <laughs> hey, the state law says you can't hold Do not your break cell any phone. State laws. It does not say you can't hold a vibrator or twist your wife's nipples. <laughs> I'm not sure. I think there must be some laws against that. You did great. And then I passed out. This podcast is not intended to provide legal guidance. <laughs> 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 ask, ask your local police officer if it's okay to diddle your wife. Your <laughs> but officer, I couldn't stop. She was having an orgasm. I wasn't speeding. Uh, was high five it, honey. That was really good. Good That's job. Really good. Thank you. So anyhow, Candy's Adventures. If you're ever uh, planning a trip in the Bay Area or you're one of our Bay Area listeners, check out Candy's Adventures. We'll have a link from the the show notes so you can get onto their calendar they actually do meet and greets for yeah, they're very for good newbies. for newbies yeah they do a lot of introductions chewy does a fantastic in fact i think he may have been doing first time yes first time discussions last night there was a lot of new faces there and really really friendly people and there was this one couple that reached out to us hey we're newbies do you want to chat so i saw them uh talking to him on his introduction thing yeah he's really good i really enjoy seeing them do that and I think more and more cities are starting to have experienced swingers uh, help do that discussion because there's a lot of unanswered questions for swingers or even kinksters that are starting to dabble with the swinging, you know, just Hmm. having multiple partners. How do you deal with jealousy and how do you deal with the rules and stuff like that? Hello, this is Bob from Couples Cruise, the leader in adults only clothing optional cruises. You are listening to Bliss Bringers. For more information on our cruises, go to blissbringers.com slash cruise. See you there. I think that's about it for that party. Before you do any sign off, you should mention that you're on your way to naughty New Orleans. Yes. Without your wife. Yes. So... And Naughty New Orleans is going to be one of the biggest sex positive podcaster meetups. Yeah, with swingers, like a thousand of them. Well, yeah, there's obviously, of course, the big Naughty New Orleans. I'm jealous. I am really, really jealous. Parties and parades and all that stuff going on. But it's also the biggest swinger podcast meetup. So if you ever you know, wanted I could to go meet, there, but then I would get fired. <laughs> Maybe let's not do that. (laughs) So if you ever wanted to meet one of your favorite podcasters or meet them or touch them or fuck them or whatever. That's right. This is your opportunity. There's going to be a whole bunch from Wingercast to two or more to Tango to a couple of the news. Um, I thought the Swap Foods. Yes, the Swap Foods were going as well. See, that would be awesome to meet. The Swinger cast, John and Allie, the Swap Foos, those yeah. crazy people that we've been listening to their podcast. At last count, there was 10 different podcasts who was going to be there. Awesome. So it's going to be awesome. The rooms are almost sold out. So if you want to join us or join, join John. us or join any of the podcasters, or if you just want to have a it's wickedly okay cool a time in... Not in New Orleans. They have the best parties all through the day. So do not get discouraged about heat and humidity because I, I hate heat and humidity. You won't notice it. Cocktails, air conditioned bars, the entire Bourbon Street is opened up uh, to swingers. You're going to have signs. Holy crap. When was the last time you could go to a city and they've got signs saying, welcome swingers. So if you are interested in that, do you want to pause the podcast right now and go to blissbringers.com slash N-I-N for Naughty New Orleans. That's N as in Nancy, I as in Indigo, N as in Naughty. Indeed. So that will take you immediately to the form to sign up for there. Uh, do it immediately because the last few 
Oh, they're going to go. Are They'll going. sell out. They, I think they do have a standby list if you really want to go on that. So, but do it, do it, do it, do it, oh do it God. now, do it now. Get to the chopper. <laughs> All righty, and I think that is it for what we have this episode. Yay! Make sure to like us on Facebook. Yes. Please, please, please put a review on iTunes. Yes. It helps us get listed at the top. There's so many great podcasters and we want to be in the top 10. So please go out to iTunes and list good stuff, hopefully good remarks. Uh, and then if you have any feedback or bad remarks, send them to us privately, please. <laughs> and I almost forgot. And Naughty in New Orleans is also doing a lifestyle award with a special category for podcasters. So please go there as well and you can vote for your favorite party location, your favorite club, your favorite organizer and your favorite podcast. So oh, really? make sure to go there and vote for us. Go to blissbringers.com slash vote and you will be there. Sweet. And with that, until next time, what's, what's your, your pleasure? pleasure? All names mentioned in this show are either fictional, taken from public record, or held by people who have given their explicit consent to be mentioned. I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> i got to get some sleep. <laughs> that was horrible. <laughs> I'm sorry, Arnold. <laughs> no. No copyright infringement was intended. <laughs>